let's cover the troubleshooting next. So for troubleshooting, we really recommend you have a topology diagram with your interface, IP, and AS numbers. All those information should be ready, right? You can visualize so it can help you troubleshoot. Before you even troubleshoot any overlay networking, you need to make sure your underlay works. Check your physical cabling, generate show tech, if you're opening a case. Check your underlay network. Make sure your LDP neighbors, you see your neighbors, they are correct. If you don't see them, make sure you check your cabling, right? Make sure your ping and trace route between your loopbacks work. Fix those issues found. So the overlay network is really dependent on uh, the underlay network. So the recommended layer tree, multi-fabric troubleshooting flow is make sure the configs are correct. Most of the time, the error could be config related. That's why the peers don't come up. So make sure those configs are correct. Reference those sample configs that we have. Then you can check your peers. Make sure they're up. First, control plane. So after the control plane is up, data plane, you can check the tunnels up. You should see for layer three, the expected next hop IP and router MAC because we're using symmetric IRB and L3 VNI. That's where the router MAC is important because it's layer three as well. Check your host routes in the VRF routing table. And of course, from the host perspective, make sure they can connect on different subnets by L3 across the fabrics. What about L2 multi-fabric troubleshooting? It's very similar. You can see the first three steps are the same compared to L3. The difference is instead of checking the routing table, you're checking the MAC table for L2, for four and five. Check the MAC table, make sure the MAC addresses are seen. And then from the host perspective, make sure they can communicate on the same subnet. Otherwise, the config wise, very similar. Of course, L2, you need to add the additional config to disable split horizon. Make sure your peers up, make sure the tunnels are up for data plane. We have full configs. So you can refer to that in the config and demo section of those sample configs. Next, you want to check your control plane, make sure they're up. So this is the example. You can check this is the border. So you want to check that your router ID is all correctly what you expect and your peers. If it's in the same AS number, IBGP, make sure they're established. If it's to re remote fabrics, it's EBGP. So make sure they're established as well. Another way to verify the VNI, the VLAN, and VRF mappings is using this command, show EVP and EVI summary. So e EVI stands for the EVPN instance. So this command, you can see the mapping between the L2 and the VLAN, and the L3 VNI and the VRF. So you want to make sure, right, if it's a border, make sure the L2 VLAN and L2 VNI are also configured, even though there are no holes there. You need that to extend between the fabrics. And of course, Vincent mentioned this global and local scope. Make sure the global scope is correctly configured so they can exchange between the fabrics. Another way to check is using this show EVPN VTAP neighbor or VRFs. So with this, you can see the VTAP IP, the L3 VNI mapping, and the router MAC, as I said, which is important for the symmetric RB. Yet another way to check EVPN peers is with the RD, the RT and the MAC info is using this command, show EVPN EVI details. This is the L2 VNI example. You can see L2 VNI number, the RD, the, the, the global and the local route targets. You can see your peers, how many remote Macs you're learning, how many remote peers are up. For the L3 VNI, very similar. You can see now instead of VLAN, it's a VRF. And you want to make sure that your, local, your global and local route targets are there as well. With your peer addresses, make sure they are, you're learning routes from those peers. Next is the data plane. Make sure the tunnel is up. Okay. You can see show interface VX land. This is the, the base command. From there, you, there are many other variations, which I'll show in the next slide. Okay. So this is the mapping between the L2, VNI, and the VLAN. You want to make sure that is up if you expect traffic to be forwarded on the L2. Make sure your remote peers are what you see. This is fabric one border. If you expect him to peer to fabric three, you should see that up as a peer here for the L2 VNI. So same thing, if you expect L3 traffic, 
to that peer, make sure it's up for the L3 VNI to the VRF. You can also look at the statistics, see if there's an NCAP and DCAP done for those traffic. And I already said that before, the L2 VNI, make sure it's on the border because you need that for L2 between fabrics. Even though there are no holes directly connected, you do need to configure L2 VNI to VLAN mapping here. More details. So show interface VX10, you can expand it further. If you do question mark, this is one VNI plus VTAPS. You can actually see the source and destination. For that VNI, this is the L2 example. It's operational. In the L3 example, make sure source and destination is operational. There's another variation, show interface VTAPS details. This, you can see actually the, the status operational plus the next hop IP interface and next hop Mac. So different variations on the same command, show you more details. Next, this is applicable to layer three multifabric. So for layer three, you should always see the host routes because you might have the same subnet span across multiple fabrics. And you do need to have host routes. Otherwise, you wouldn't know where to forward to correctly. So make sure you see those with your desired next hop. So this is, if this IP you expect it from fabric tree, next hop should be either from the fabric tree border. Same thing. I expect this IP from fabric four, it should have a border of the fabric four VTAP. And if the same VNN exists in different fabrics, if you do a show up for that VRF, you should be able to, have to see that entry as well. So this is really required for up suppression. If you do not learn it in up table, up suppression will not work. For L2, multifabric is all about MAC addresses. So look at the MAC table, make sure the remote MAC addresses that you want are seen with the correct next hop. So again, this is a, a MAC that I have in Fabric 4. So this is the Fabric 4 VTAP IP. Another way to verify the MACs, so show EVPN MAC IP, you can see the VNI and MAP and MAC address and the next hop IP. So various ways to check. So we've given you both. Finally, check the host. Right? That's the most important test. If everything is configured, but the host cannot communicate, then you have a problem. So from the host perspective, I have a host here on the 10 subnet, 10, 1, 10 subnet. Is a remote destination on the same subnet in a different fabric, 10, 1, 10, 15, right? you can ping, make sure they work this L2. You also want to check your L3. So from 10, 1, 10 to the 10, 1, 11 subnet, you need to route. So this is through the L3 VNI, make sure the host can communicate. You might need to mirror traffic and do a packet capture if required, right? So with that, we've run out of time. So we'll continue with this tomorrow.